okay this is a video for all these morons um, that talk about faith only now there's different um, levels of faith there's the word belief which is connected with faith and then there's the works of faith you see so when you say that you're saved through faith alone and then you've got James here saying um, yeah thou hast faith and I have works show me thy faith without thy works and I will show you thee my faith by my works you see so that's that's an argument that's like a 2000 year old probably longer argument the Pharisees were probably saying just listen to us and, and you'll be saved you know Jesus came along he showed that the, the works of the Pharisees were not based on faith but uh, but he did say to his people to do what they say because what they were actually saying came from the law of Moses. But he said, do not do what they do because their works aren't based on faith. Okay, it's just raw lo raw law, if you, if you like. Um, the statutes of the law, basically just performing them. And Paul was just saying that through just performing these statutes of the law, a man can't be saved. It must be by faith. And this argument, I believe, existed 2,000 years ago, 3,000 years ago, and probably even longer than that. But as you can see, James made a summary about it here. It's got to be faith by works. Faith by my works. Okay? He's going to prove to people that he has faith in the Lord by his works. Jesus says, you know, a tree by its fruit, that the fruit that it produces, you know what type of tree it is, okay? Um, James again, just, uh, seest thou how faith wrought with his works, and by his works with, was faith made perfect? <laughs> what does a prophet, my brethren, Though a man say he has faith and have not works, can faith save him? So it's like God saying to Mo uh, Noah, um, build an ark for me, um, and I'm going to save you, basically. And Noah saying, I believe your word, and then just sitting on a pew, sitting on a log of wood every Sunday, thanking and praising God, and not, not actually doing anything, you see? So it was through the hearing of the word that made Noah aware what he had to do and that which he did was works of faith during that period and there was works of faith uh, during this New Testament period as well which, which James was talking about which we'll go into in a second. I mean just look at all the scriptures here. I mean certainly Paul talks about works of the law because he's rebuking Pharisaic Judaism that's what he's rebuking he's not rebuking um, observing the Ten Commandments that's not what, he's, not what he's rebuking them for he's rebuking them for Pharisaic Judaism because they were trying to perform all the works of the law and they were really sort of had lost faith in, in Jesus Christ they had really that you know there's some messianic synagogues that are, aren't really strong in their faith and, and they really focus on the works of the law as true James wasn't talking about the works of the law at all he was talking about the the works of faith you see that and then you see uh, the book of Revelation here chapter 2 remember therefore when thou art fallen and repent and do the first works works or else I'll come unto thee quickly and remove thy candlestick out of thy place except thou repent now is repentance a work? In scripture, repentance is never counted as a work, any form of work whatsoever. It's just expected by God for men to repent of their sin. It's a command. Now, if you've ever said the sinner's prayer, that is a form of repentance. So if you've ever asked Jesus into your life, right, then you're actually performing what you might call a works-based salvation because you've repented from your sin, you see? Now, if you haven't accepted Jesus into your heart and you haven't repented, you're not a Christian. 
you're not a Christian. You're a religious fanatic. You know not God. Um, you know not the Spirit of God. And you put down people who truly are um, more complete in their works than you are. You see? Because Jesus judges the works of the churches. He judges our works. Okay? I know thy works and thy labour and thy patience and how um, thou cannot bear them which are evil. And thou hast tried them which say they are apostles and are not and hast found them liars. Liars. Right? People that say faith only, pay your tithe, be a pure warmer, they are what's called, what the Bible calls, liars. Okay? And has borne and has patience for my name's sake, has laboured and has not fainted. That sounds to me like they were doing work, some sort of work, okay? Maybe they weren't building an ark, maybe they weren't building a church physically, but they were certainly labouring for the kingdom's sake. Nevertheless, I have somewhat against thee, because thou hast left thy first love. Now, what does that mean? Is love a work? <laughs> you know, the work of love? Well, I mean, I'll show you some scriptures about that as well. Okay, we just read this out. Remember whence thou art fallen. So this could be likened unto the Galatians. You know, that we're probably focusing on um, the law itself. What, what the Apostle Paul might describe the works of the law because they were forgetting Jesus Christ but this thou hast that thou ha hatest the deeds of the Nicolaitans which I also hate that is basically um, the kind of like kind of resembles Pharisaic Judaism where they've got a hierarchical kind of a priesthood thing type thing it's kind of along these lines okay you can study about who the Nicolaitans are so if you're just getting one man in your church who's who's the sort of authority then that's a false church they're liars if they're not using the word of god as the final authority and if they don't have a fivefold ministry as the word of god teaches apostles prophets evangelists bible teachers and pastors then they're liars they're not following the biblical uh, the, the way that the bible tells us to set up a church he that has an ear, let him hear what the Spirit saith to the churches. To him that overcomes, I will give to eat the tree of life, which is in the midst of the paradise of God. And unto the angel of the church of Smyrna write these things, saith the first and last, which was there and alive. Well, I think that's, uh, yeah, that's from the previous. They don't even tell you the first. You know, it's crazy. Three of the chapter, there we go, it's better. So that was to the church of Ephesus. Okay, that particular one. All right. I'm not really big on going online to get the word of God because it's it's not good. But anyhow, you know, if you're saying that the gifts of the Spirit were just for the apostles, as the first century church did. And the Apostle Paul rebuked them in Corinthians, you know, telling them the nine gifts of the Spirit. And that if you receive the Holy Spirit, you also have received spiritual gifts, which you should exercise through faith. Faith is not a work, okay? But there is works of faith. And then they went out and preached that men should repent. Is that a work? Absolutely not. You're expected to do that. You're commanded to do the Great Commission. If your church isn't doing that, they're a bunch of liar hypocrites. They're worse than Pharisees worse than Pharisees okay um, let's see works of faith there you are 2nd Thessalonians you see there's works of the law there's works of faith there's um, works of miracles that's what Jesus spoke of to John the Baptist followers you know he said go and uh, or he said to the Pharisees, if you, if, if you don't believe in who I am, then believe in the works that I do, for they glorify the Father. Because they did glorify the Father, because people were getting set free from all kind of bondages of sin, 
um, when they were repenting they were getting healed um, remembering without ceasing your work of faith and labor of love labor of love and just what I was talking about earlier is this a, is love a work as labor is work by the way if you if you look it up in a dictionary labor is work so if you love people does that mean that you're you're a works based salvation you see how stupid that doctrine is you see how insane that doctrine is you see how snared of satan that these people are that they're truly just um under the apron strings of whatever pastor is pulling their strings to keep them in that church you see and make people feeling guilty about having an emotion 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 is love yeah you just want hard cold uh logic that's fine but i actually find that people that don't love don't know what logic is i believe that you sh you have love first and then through god's love it produces godly logic real logic where you, you preach a true gospel that you truly are able to um, separate the word of truth you know when Jesus said the greatest commandment is you shall love the Lord your God with all your heart mind and strength what part of that scripture do you not think is um, is emotional do you think that love is an emotional um, do you think it's a feeling of course it is love is a feeling towards God, towards each other, towards ourselves. But the way these pastors robotically um, throw out these scriptures as if they're robots and their um, congregation are just robots. You should love the Lord your God with all your heart, all your mind, all your strength. And that, and, and, but, and this is the way they talk. I'm putting on a stupid voice, but you understand that that's the mentality of them. They don't have any real personality, character. Um, they don't actually understand what love is because they're bound to a lot of written covenants which the Bible doesn't teach either. Yeah? The Bible doesn't teach about written covenants. In fact, it preaches against written covenants and I'll show you the scripture for that right now. Now, it does talk about the church being the bride of Christ. So you notice that in pagan marriages they have... Um, Basically, um, they're not covenants, but they're they're contracts. Basically, that's what they are. So, what does Jesus say? Go and sign contracts with uh, men and stuff like that, and religious contracts, especially. I mean, sometimes you have to sign contracts for work, right? But what this is saying um, is. Let your communication be ye, okay? Let your yes be yes and your no be no, for whatsoever is more than these cometh of evil. So that's what Jesus said, okay? That's what Jesus said. And so if you've got um, a contract, right? Some people do written covenants. Um, that's fine, like in a marriage. But even then, Jesus wasn't really really for that because if we're the bride of Christ you know some people get baptismal certificates and all that where do you think that certificate goes well it's filed in the Vatican your name's actually filed into the Vatican and they're literally um, praying again you know basically praying for you to come back to the mother church and sacrificing to idols and doing all kind of probably black magic against you if you get one of these um you know, baptismal certificates. So, I, I recognize that, uh, I think Brian Denlinger definitely teaches against the Babel buildings, and he teaches works and faith, which is what the Bible teaches. So I'm very much in favor um, of that teaching. So just to make you aware of that, um, love comes from the heart, and uh, it's, it freely belongs to God because God first loved us so that we could love him and that we could love one another. There's no written contracts between us and God, but we know that this Bible here is God's written uh, record and covenant um, with his people, for his people. You know, when you go into a covenant, you know, you, you put it in writing. 
and and that's 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 God is righteous. God knows these things, and I still I, I still understand about the Mandela effect, but I'm not as affected as some other people are. Okay, Christian or unChristian, I'm not. You know, my my relationship with God has not been affected whatsoever. It's actually been strengthened through this because the Lord has shown me that in the last days that these um, very strange things would begin to happen. Um, so it, it strengthens my faith. It doesn't detract from my faith. It, it strengthens it. Okay, guys, thanks for watching. May the Lord bless you.